Good morning. You can see I'm right in at the deep end here. First things first, we've got some uh, exciting laps and experiences in the Formula Renault single seaters. Um, yeah, so straight in. First half of the morning, like we woke up in the pitch black. Most of the morning's been technical briefings, track layout. Now it's getting real. Now we're going to be jumping straight into the Formula Renault, and then later on in the day, it's into a proper F1 car. Ridiculous. If that is a taste of things to come, I, I am already like, these things are amazing. Turn, I think if we, if we were doing the full circuit layout, it'd be, it'd be turn five, which I think is called scene or sign. I've been told in an F1 car, it's flat in seventh, which when, when you first start doing the, the sort of warm up laps, you can't believe it, but then you start to build up to it. I mean, this thing, I think it'd be flat in sixth. It's unbelievable. Um, it's just absolutely buzzing. I cannot, now, you know, early on this morning, I was quite nervous about it all. Uh, these things are actually quite an approachable car. I can't say the same for the F1 car yet, but uh, oh man, I can live here. <laughs> it's so good. So that's it for the single-seater Formula Renault stuff. Like after this, we're in the F1. I mean, when we were having the, the briefing earlier, the jump from these cars to Formula One, if you are going to pursue it as a career, is about four years. <laughs> so I think we're doing it in about four hours. Uh, so when I say in at the deep end, it's, yeah, truly, truly crazy, crazy stuff. I believe what's about to happen. I'm gonna have my seat fitting for the Formula One car. I uh, mean, in what world do those words exist? Next up, I'm gonna spend some time, go through the steering wheel controls and things like that. Just check it out, ridiculous. Cool. All right. This is crazy. <laughs> How ridiculous is this? Raise your knees up past the edge of this padding as far as you can this way. Both sides. Perfect. Excellent. That's good. It feels so good in there. It's incredibly snug. Um, the Formula Renault car, that was pretty cozy. But nothing like that. I mean, that's like it's almost shrink wrapped around you. It's fully molded. There's no option but to left foot brake uh, because your, your knees are basically touching. Um, and they just had me do a brake pressure test, so I had to brake as hard as I could with my left leg, basically to see if the strength of my leg is up to pressing these brakes. Uh, they said press it with all of your might. I was pressing it so hard, I was actually using my back. Uh, and he was like, yeah, that's about right. And I was like, good job, that's about right, because that's all I've got. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, even just sitting in it, you can really get like a feel for why these things are a completely different gravy. Uh, just look at the steering wheel. <laughs> Six paddles there. I know one's the hand clutch. To be honest, it's it's a privilege just to be able to sit in one. I mean, the thought that I'm going to drive out on Paul Ricard 
in a Formula One car is blowing my mind. It's absolutely ridiculous. Look at it. It's an actual Formula One car. Unbelievable. And the force equals L. Large? Large, yeah. That sounds about right. Wow. It's starting to get really real now, even putting these things in. See you on the other side. in here. So when I drive off, you're not going to be able to hear what I'm saying. We're probably going to be concentrating too much to talk anyway. So um, this is what it's like as a normal person to drive a Formula One car.
I mean, I've been in some fast cars, but that is just totally different ball game. It's unbelievable. But for then, I'm like, I'm, I'm actually lost for words. I mean, the experience is quite emotional. Oh my god, it's unbelievable. It, it felt like the G's were going to pull my head off my neck. It was just. Oh god. I can't tell you. If, if you ever wonder what it's like to drive as a normal person, it is everything and more. It is. It's actually quite an approachable car. Like, once you get into the fact that it's ballistic. Gearbox. So if you watch this channel regularly, you'll know I'm a bit of a gearbox snob. The gearbox in this, you know, I go on about like tone changes and it's just like it, oh, everything. You, you sort of turn, you don't turn with your arms, you turn with your wrists. And when you down change, like the brakes on this are like throwing out parachutes and anchors that like just dig into the tarmac. Listen to this. Like to know that you sound like that, like when you're driving. Uh, I'm absolutely blown away. Like from from everyone watching to everyone in this pit garage, like I just want to say a massive thank you. Thank you to you guys because without you being wonderful and subscribing and watching this channel, quite frankly, I wouldn't have had the invite. Um, I lost for words. I'm absolutely lost for words. I'm going to try and get back to as many comments as I can on this. So if you have any questions about what it's like from a layman's point of view to drive an F1 car, let me know. I'll try and get back to as many as I can. Um, yeah. I've got to go film my family now because it was that much of a big deal. Back in a minute. <laughs> I'm still coming down from it, to be honest with you. I'm just, just saying I've got a headache because I've had this like depletion of adrenaline. It's just fallen out of my brain. Uh, at the realization of what's just happened. It's, uh, I grew up, grew up, like my household was full of Formula One sounds, you know, I grew up as a Formula One fan. And to just be in it, get a bit emotional about it, it's just, I can't believe it's happened. I'm absolutely gobsmacked, absolutely gobsmacked. It's like, it's like, it's like the astronaut getting his chance to go to space. It is literally that, but of, a, of an echelon that is so beyond fathomability. I mean, I mean, it sounds like, I'm not sure if you're picking this up, but to know that when you're in it, it sounds like that. And it's the naturally aspirated stuff as well. So I know we've gone turbocharged in this era, but for me, I grew up on the naturally aspirated stuff. And to be, to have that experience, man, it's just, yeah, just a recalibration. That is it. I'm no longer trackside. How cool is this? Like I'm walking between the two Renault Sport Formula One team trucks. I feel like a real driver here. It's so amazing. Unfortunately, I now have to remove the fabulous, fabulous infinity racing suits and uh, come swiftly back down to earth after that just life-changing experience. I know that might sound dramatic but as a petrol head through and through and someone who's grown up watching Formula One uh, twisted my brain. Anyway back to the paddock and then we'll uh, yeah call it a day. Back at base camp, this place is phenomenal. It is absolute heaven for petrol heads here. You've got hotels and spas and just facilities to indulge in your wildest petrol head dreams. Um, yeah, there's not much, really much more to, to say, predominantly because I've ran out of descriptive words. Uh, I really hope you've enjoyed it and it's given you a good insight into what it's like for a layman to drive an F1 car. For me, it's been mind blowing. For you, I hope it's been insightful. Look forward to seeing you next time. As always, thanks for watching. Ciao.